All right, everyone. Hello, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Kanish Shari, and I'm the Community Partnership and Engagement Lead with Getting Hired. I'm a 22-year-old Bangladeshi female, and I'm wearing my hair down past my shoulders, and it is naturally black with blonde highlights and brown eyes. I'm wearing a beige shirt buttoned down, and I have my nose pierced with a hoop on my left side. I've been working in the staffing industry for the past two years, and I'm super excited to teach you some tri tricks on how to get hired. I'll be your host this afternoon for our fourth Hiring Hacks, Tips to Get You Hired. Today, you're going to be hearing from two subject matter experts in the recruitment space who will share best practices to help you prepare for your next interview and secure that next role. We've got some housekeeping items. You'll notice that I enabled closed captioning. If you would like to turn them on, you can do so by clicking on the caption button on the bottom of your screen. Second, we'd love for the session to be as interactive as possible and have questions for you. So we'll be monitoring the live chat. So feel free to use the chat feature located at the top of your screen. And lastly, we will stay on the line for 30 minutes after the presentation to answer any questions that come in. So again, Feel free to use this chat feature to ask questions to our subject matter experts and take advantage of this time because it is truly for you. Before I pass it over to our experts, here's a little bit about getting hired. We are a talent solution company that focuses on the intersectionality of diversity. Our mission is to connect underserved and underrepresented talent to inclusive employers. We have over 150,000 jobs on our job board um, with inclusive employers who are looking for talent like you. If you're looking for resources to help you aid in your job search and you haven't seen our website already, I encourage you to browse through our job board and register today to stay up to date with the latest job postings and future workshops to further develop your skills as you continue your search for your next adventure. You'll see at the bottom left corner of your screen, we have a QR code for you to sign up for our talent community for easy access. Without further ado, I'd love to introduce our two panelists for today's workshop. We have Getting Hired's very own Brittany Knowles and Jolene Martin. Ladies, feel free to introduce yourself to our audience. Great afternoon, everyone. My name is Brittany Knowles and I am an account manager with Getting Hired as well. I have the opportunity to be a part of training and development. Um, I want to give my descriptive description. I am an African-American 30 something female with blonde highlights and a curly bob and a smile on my face, hoping that you all are able to ascertain all the excitement that I have to be able to see each and every one of you be here and to connect with us on these awesome tips that we're gonna be talking about today, all right? So I can't wait to get started. And I'm gonna turn this over to Jolene for her to introduce herself. Jolene. Hi everyone, welcome and happy Thursday. I hope that you are having a fantastic, beautiful day wherever you're calling in from. My name is Jolene Martin and I am the talent engagement lead with Getting Hired. I have over 20 plus years of um, recruitment experience and talent management engagement. Um, I am a white female. I have light brown hair with blonde and copper highlights. Um, I am wearing I am wearing a white and black colored black shirt with short sleeves. And now I will kick it back to Brittany to get us started. Alrighty, I am seeing over in the chat some chatter. And so I want to make sure Maria Parker, the way that we have it, we're able to see participants. You all aren't able to see each other. That way you have the opportunity to focus on what we're saying and not be distracted by anyone. All right. So with that being said, I hope that I answered your question and we are going to be throughout the conversation um, interacting in the chat section. Um, I may actually um, talk about it or Jolene may talk about it verbally or we may write it in the chat, okay? Nope, and let me just say, there's nothing wrong with you being by yourself because you're gonna be the one to have all the tips and tricks. You're gonna have a plethora of, 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 of interest and you're gonna be able to pick from whatever companies you want to. So what? That means if you're the only one, you're special, okay? It's all good, it's all good. So what I'm gonna talk about today is the application to offer. For those of you that's never gone through this process, I'm gonna walk you through it, all right? First and foremost, the first thing that you wanna do is you want to do a resume refresh. Now, let me explain to you what I mean by that. If you do not have a resume, do not be alarmed. 
We're going to talk to you about that a little bit later in the, the presentation. If you do have a resume, but you haven't updated it in 10 years, I'm talking to you when I say a resume refresh. So at the bare minimum, you want to refresh it on a yearly basis. But every time you have a new opportunity to um, to do a specific skill, whether or not it's being a lead on a project, whether or not it's being able to publicly speak or anything like that, anything that would be an accomplishment that you've made, you want to make sure that you're updating it on your resume. All right. The next uh, step in this process is the actual application itself. So nowadays, the majority of those of applications are online. Um, and, and what happens is you're able to upload your documentation and all that sort of thing into the online portal, which is a part of our applicant tracking system. And it connects your resume and your supporting documentation with the recruiter. So that's the next step. So if your um, resume, your application, um, it aligns with the role, then you should be receiving um, some sort of correspondence from a recruiter, whether or not it is a quick um, email, uh, a, a quick phone call to set something up. And look at that portion as almost like a screening interview. They're going to take an opportunity with you because they've already seen that you have the qualifications, but they want to kind of get a better view of who you are and kind of give you more information about the role and if it's something that you're interested in. Uh, I, I see you, Lisa, give me one second and I will answer your question. Um, so they, they wanna get an opportunity to see if you um, meet the criteria to answer whatever questions that you may have and if you do a good job in that screening or if your uh, skill set aligns with this, that particular role, then they will then forward you over to the hiring manager. When you have the opportunity to connect with the hiring manager, at that time, you'll be able to ask more specific questions about the role itself. Um, they'll more than likely go over your resume and it can take the form of, of, of different forms. It could be an in-person interview. It can be an online interview. Um, all that information more than likely would be um, sent to you to be able to prepare for that um, meeting. And I want to make sure that you're also aware that during this time, in between you having the, the, the interview with the hiring manager and you having that screening with the recruiter, this would be a good time for you to ask for whatever accommodations that you may need for the interview. If that is having additional time, um, being able to um, get the interview questions beforehand, there are certain accommodations that you can ask for during this time. And then the next step, this is one thing that you definitely want to do in the interview. You want to make sure that you ask what are the next steps in the process. It may be one, two, or three um, different interviews that you have to do. Um, th that's something that I've had to experience. Uh, they've had I've had uh, the hiring or the recruiter speak to me, the hiring manager, and I spoke with the entirety of the team. So I had a total of three, and I've done that no numerous times. So I just want to make you aware that you may end up having to interview more than one time, and most often. If you are a good candidate, that's when you'll have to do it um, a, a little more often for, for more high level roles. Um, they'll want to make sure that they're taking you through um, more than one checkpoint, all right? And at that point, once you've had the opportunity to ask them what the next steps are, um, you'll be able to follow through with that final decision with them um, to ascertain if you have received the role or not, okay? Now I did see, a few questions. I didn't want to leave this page if it had anything to do with this. Hello, where can I find a recording of your session? I'm being called away in Canton 10 at this time. I understand, Lisa. Um, we may have uh, certain clips that we'll be possibly um, adding to our social media as well. We do these conversations um, multiple times in the year. And so be looking at our getting hired page to see what our upcoming hiring hacks um, uh, sessions are going to be. All right. All right, we can go to the next slide. All right, the resume tells your story, all right? So recruiters look at your resume for an average of 7.4 seconds. Now, I know that was a question and I, I got a little sidetracked with the chat. Um, a, a question that, that was, was supposed to be asked, my bad y'all, was how on average, how long does a recruiter look at your resume? And y'all, I have had people say a minute. I have had people say seven minutes. I've had people say 10 minutes. Y'all, it is 
0.4 seconds on average. And so with that being said, these are some tips in order to make sure that you make the best impact in that short amount of time. One, objectives are not necessary. You want to make sure that you are getting straight to the meat um, of, of what is important, okay? Next, you want to make sure that your resume has experience, education, and skills. And I'm going to talk about that in the next slide so you can see um, what that looks like, okay? Now, two-page resumes are okay for 10-plus years of experience. Um, I will tell you that my resume, because I previously worked in academia, was seven to eight pages. I know depending on what industry, um, I've, I've heard people say that you wanna do a one pager and that sort of thing. It has to do with the industry as well as the number of years of experience that you have, okay? So you wanna make sure that for me, because I've had 10 plus years of experience and I have 10 plus years of experience in different areas, I have uh, tended to also look at my resume and only put roles that are aligned with the role that I'm looking for as well. That That's another way to kind of simplify um, your resume. And then I put other experience or so, so I'll, I'll uh, highlight it as a relevant experience um, and do that um, in, in numerical order. And then towards the end of my resume, I'll do um, other experience um, just to make it more concise so that I'm not, I'm taking as much time with roles that are not aligned with that particular role role, okay? Consider adding some color to make your resume pop. This is a really, really good one. Recognizing that recruiters see hundreds of resumes, and so you want to make sure that yours stands out in a positive way. So you, you want to make sure that a, a pop of color is still conservative. You don't necessarily want to go with a hot pink or a, 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 a grainy yellow you want to use more bolder colors that are going to uh, align really well with your professional experience as well. You want to make sure that it aligns throughout the document, that you're not using one color for one section and another color for another. Okay. Next thing you want to do is your professional email address. Add that. Now, y'all, I recognize that email addresses are free. And so you may have an email address that says, Pookie. 189 at Yahoo. We don't want to use that email address for our resume. We want to make sure that the resume email, the email address that you have associated with your account is going to put you in the best light. My advice to you would be to use your name as your um, email address. And so for me, mine would be Brittany Knowles at Gmail or Brittany Knowles at Yahoo um, so that I am presenting in the most professional manner. Okay. Next punctuation and grammar. Recognize that, again, that 7.4 seconds goes by like this, okay? So with that being said, any kind of grammatical error is not going to put your best foot forward. So you want to make sure that you're going back through your resume with a fine-tooth comb to make sure that you're not missing anything, that there are no to double ands, or you didn't miss a comma, or that sort of thing. And feel free to reach out to your resources. Um, Grammarly is a very a, a very good resource that you can uh, utilize as well. Utilize your your uh, family and friends to kind of look at it and, and give you some insight as well. Um, the more people that have eyes on it, the better your resume can be. Okay. Next, you want to be sure to put your experience section in chronological order. I did speak about that a little bit. You want to make sure that it's not kind of going all over the place, that you start from your newest all the way to your oldest at the bottom, okay? And then lastly, do not add personal information. And what I mean, we're not talking about your name or anything like that. We're talking about social security numbers, full addresses, that sort of thing, um, your birthday, um, recognize that especially when you're putting your, your resume and application um, through the process, numerous eyes are on it. So just for your, for, for your protection, you want to make sure that you're putting the, the, what the, your, your name as well as maybe your LinkedIn information and that sort of thing. And as you move further along in the process, um, you may end up having to furnish that information at a later date, but it's not something that you have to have on your resume, especially considering how many eyes looking at your resume, okay? Next slide, please. 
So here we're going to actually be looking at the actual resume itself. As you can see, we were talking about that bit of pop of color. So you see that they are utilizing the black as well as the blue. And then we talked about what things should be on your resume. And so um, instead of that full address, you can put your city and state. Um, you can put your contact information, which includes maybe your cell phone um, and your email address, your professional email address. And then if you have your LinkedIn, if you have a LinkedIn, you want to definitely um, add that as well. And as you can see, this is a nice setup for your experience. I know that it only shows one experience so that we're able to condense it so it can be on one page. You're going to have that, that portion be repeated as many times as you've had a new position. So it's the company, the city and state, the month and year from beginning to end. And if there is no end, you can put at the end of that present. Um, and then you're going to want to make sure that you are um, making sure that you're, you're being concise in your sentences and that it's like bullets. You want to do a concise sentence that is not a run-on sentence because you want to get as much experience on there as possible possible. Okay. You want to put your education on there, the degrees achieved as well as skills and personal. Now, when we're talking about skills, that is if you are able to, or if you've had experience with public speaking, if you uh, know how to utilize PowerPoint, if you know how to utilize um, the Microsoft suite, any skills that you have, that are transferable skills or skills that could allow you to be able to be a good fit for the role, you wanna make sure that you're highlighting that. Are there any questions about this section? Because I recognize that we may have some people on here that do not have a resume or some of the information that I gave you, maybe you haven't heard before. And so I wanna pause and give you all an opportunity to ask any questions at this time before I move on. Awesome, I'm seeing some thumbs up. Okay, let me just check really quick the chat. Okay, I see you, Maria. Tell me, what do you have? What question do you have for me? So any any kind of like personal accomplishment, um, any anything that is a highlight that you want to add, any certifications or things that you may have, you wanna make sure that you're adding to um, that particular section. Can you hit tab and add the extra tabs? Can you hit tab and add the extra tabs? I'm not exactly sure <laughs> what you mean by that. Forgive me if I'm being a little dense at the moment. No, Maria, you do not need to put why you left the role. Now there uh, on your resume. Now that might be a question on an application. But that doesn't that that may not necessarily be something that you put on your resume. Um, it's something that you can express um, during the interview. And um, you want to be careful about the things that you say about the reasons why you left the job, recognizing that a resume is a, a testimony of how you're going to be in whatever role that you're wanting to go into. So you want to make sure that your resume is a positive one and and that aligns also with that interview piece. And I don't want to step on your toes at all, um, Jolene. So if I'm going too far into this, let me know. But in answering questions about your past experience, you want to keep it cute. You want to make sure that you're keeping it positive. If you can't say anything nice uh, about your previous experience, then my suggestion to you would be to say that you moved on for um, better professional opportunities, okay? Um, what does a LinkedIn profile look like? I'm going to show you that in 2.5 seconds. All right. Two shakes of a lamb's tail. Okay. I see you, Jolene. Forgive me. I, I see that was from you. Um, is using Indeed's format resume okay? Um, I, I am not necessarily familiar with Indeed's format. Um, maybe Jolene could, could answer that question if you have familiarity with the Indeed, in, Indeed format. Um, yeah, Indeed will work in a pinch, but because the Indeed resume, typically when it comes through Indeed, it doesn't have any of your contact information on it, it makes it challenging. Um, it's, if it's all you have, then that's okay, but just know that if they were, to, if someone were to reach out to you and ask you for 
um, another resume for your interview, you would need to be able to provide a resume that has contact information because when we receive them through Indeed, it doesn't. So it just has some kind of unique identifier to Indeed. And so we wouldn't have your phone number or your email address to reach out to you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jolene. And Absolutely. I want to go ahead and um, go through those bullets as well. I saw a, a few more questions that came up. So you want to use the who method, what you did, how you did it, and what outcome you received from it. You want to describe the value that you added and the results you delivered within each role that you were uh, were assisted with or you were assigned to. You want to start every line with an action verb, drive, conduct, demonstrate, streamline, oversee, support. You should have a minimum of three points per role and be consistent with the format. So if you start on an aerial font, you want to complete on an aerial font. If you start with 12 point font, you want to continue on a 12 point font. All right. I see a question. How far back should you go? Um, I will tell you the 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 suggestion that I was made uh, was at a maximum 10 years, unless it's a situation where, I'm sorry, 10 years, 10 years of experience, unless it's a situation where you have older experience that directly aligns with the role, um, the resume should be within your last 10 years of employment. What if you have multiple certifications? How do you determine what should take preference? Um, I would say, if, if you have multiple certifications and they all align with the role, I would just put them in order of when you received it. And so with the same, um, with the same thought process behind your experience, you wanna go with your most recent certification all the way to the oldest one that you have, okay? All right, we have a poll that's gonna be coming up and our, my wonderful Kenise is going to launch it for us. The poll reads, how active are you on LinkedIn? We wanna know. Are you a one, I don't have a LinkedIn account? Two, I have a linked account, a LinkedIn account, but don't really use it. Three, I have a LinkedIn account, but don't know how to use it to build my network. Four, I use LinkedIn on a regular basis and find it helpful to network. And five, I use LinkedIn every week, day, and have it have found it a useful tool to build my network. All right. And it's, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what you all have. All right. So, oh, this is this is pretty evenly split. We have about one in five individuals on the call that do not have a LinkedIn account. We have one in four on the call that have a linked account, LinkedIn account, but don't really use it very much. We have approximately one in five that say, I have a LinkedIn account, but no, don't know how to use it to build my network. And then for 34%, I'm gonna combine these two, uh, the 34% use it on a regular basis and find it helpful for networking. And the other one um, uses it every day and finds it very useful, all right? so. We are in great company. If you are someone who is just starting out on your LinkedIn journey, I'm excited that I get to be the person to interview uh, to, to introduce you to it, okay? So let's go into LinkedIn. What is LinkedIn for? It's an opportunity for you to connect and network, okay? It's a platform that you're able to use to directly apply for jobs and it's free, y'all. For free, F-R-E-E. -E. Now, let me also make mention, I would be remiss if I did not say, yes, LinkedIn is awesome, but so is getting hired's platform as well. We are also F-R-E-E -E free, okay? So just wanted to put that out there, you know, love LinkedIn, but I love getting hired a little bit more, just saying, just saying, all right? Next, um, one of the benefits of LinkedIn is you get to learn about the current job market, is an opportunity for you to be able to attract potential employers, show your skills, um, what projects that you've been able to lead, any interests that you're involved in, and any certifications that you may have. 
And then it gives you an opportunity to give and receive endorsements from colleagues. So look at that as uh, a reference just out there for other people to be able to see that uh, maybe a colleague or a former employer or someone was able to give you um, to just vouch for um, the different skills that you have. So it's really, really an awesome, awesome, awesome um, platform. Um, and, and especially now in this job market, you should be utilizing it, okay? Any questions about what LinkedIn is used for? Thank you so much, Kenise. She put gettinghired.com into the chat for you so that you're able to so that you're able to uh, make sure that you're connecting with us. All right. All right. Next slide. So this is how you set it up. You're going to go to uh, linkedin.com. You're going to join with an email address and create a password, y'all. Again, you want to make sure that you're using your professional email address, okay? Um, because more than likely, if you did want your contact information to be viewed for someone to be able to email you, um, that is what they're going to be utilizing in order to be able to do that, okay? You want to add your location, and let me tell you why that is important. Uh, LinkedIn can, helps you to network, and so if anyone in your area is looking for someone that has your skill set, they'll be able to look in the region that they're in or the region that you live in to be able to find you in that in that manner as well. It's an opportunity for you to be able to connect with people that may be, for instance, me. I used to work in academics. And because we had 50,000 students and hundreds of staff, I did not know everybody that worked in the same, at, at the same school as I did. And so, through LinkedIn, I met certain people that I wouldn't have met otherwise. So it's a really, really cool, um, a, a cool feature of that, um, having that location feature, okay? You wanna make sure that you're adding your interest because that's gonna help others to be able to find you and you to be able to find other people. And then you wanna update your profile with your education, certifications, volunteer work, past and current work experience, and pictures. This is something that uh, came up in one of the um, presentations that I gave, I did some research on mitigating bias in hiring, and recruiters are five times more likely to click on a profile that has a picture. And so you want to make sure that you make your LinkedIn profile as engaging as possible, because that gives you that much more of an edge over the other people that are on LinkedIn or applying to these different roles, okay? And the last slide that I'm gonna be going over with you is what the LinkedIn looks like. Now y'all prepare yourself because you're gonna see a picture of my beautiful, beautiful coworker, Kanise. She, she, she volunteered to put her profile on here. Thank you so much, Kanise. Isn't she beautiful? So on the left-hand side is what your profile picture and what your profile is going to look like, okay? And so, uh, make sure that you're using a professional picture. Um, if you can, if you have a professional picture, make sure that you, you're using, utilizing that. If you don't have a professional picture um, and what you have is a, a, a selfie, you want to try to make it as close to your face as possible um, so that you're just, you're not getting necessarily very much background in the background. Um, you want to make sure that that um, it's, it's something that is, presentable. Um, going back, you can, um, you have the option to be able to add your pronouns, um, what organization that you're currently working with, um, what you have the option to be able to put different things that you're interested in or different roles that you are interested in. And so uh, for me, mine might be training and development, diversity and education, um, that that might be some of the different hashtags and things that I may have on my LinkedIn profile, because that's what my experience is in. Um, you see the, the location is down there as well as the contact information. And then one of the key new features that they have is the, um, the border that you see, open to work or hiring. So for those of you that are looking for a role, and I'm assuming that you're looking for a role because you're here, you want to make sure that you put add that 
um, border around because it, it makes it easier for recruiters to find you uh, when you have it that way, as well as if you want to be proactive, recruiters and people that are hiring for positions oftentimes are using that to be able to attract people to them also. OK, you want to make sure that you have if you are interested in um, hearing about new roles, that you have it as open to work. OK, um, next, you want to make sure that you're selecting the option, finding a new job and what your job preferences are. And then you can click to add it to your profile. And as well, I want to make sure that I'm also recognizing this last tip. You have the option, just in case you are looking for a role and you're currently working, you have the option to make it where people from your organization are not able to see that you are open to work in the event that, that might cause you some issue. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to the amazing Jolene to finish this out. Thank you, everyone. Um, Brittany, thank you. Wonderful as always. I love listening to you. Um, talk when you're giving your training sessions. I'm um, just so engaging and just it's awesome. So welcome everyone. Uh, so now we're going to move on to the interviewing portion of it. So you've already gotten your resume all set up. You've already gotten your LinkedIn account all taken care of. And now you're starting to um, interview for positions. You're starting to look for jobs on the internet. Can I have the first three on the slide please? So we have three interviews that you are going to be potentially going through. And we're gonna talk a little bit about each of them for, um, in detail. But before I get into that, I do wanna say that I talk with my hands and so I will do my very best not to um, because I know it can be distracting. Um, but if you see my hands, I, I apologize. But okay, so let's talk about this. You applied for the role, you submitted your information and you're waiting anxiously for, um, for some kind of acknowledgement that you're gonna be moving forward. Recruiters will typically reach out um, in one of three ways. Uh, most popular right now is an email. You'll receive an email that says, hello, I received your resume for such and such position and we would love to set up a time to talk with you. Um, can you please uh, pick a time on here and um, pick a time on, uh, provide me with the time or use this link to select a time that's going to work for your availability. And then you'll either follow that link or you'll respond to the email and give them some times. When they actually ask for times of your availability, um, and it's not a link uh, for you to actually go in and schedule yourself, if they say, please provide me with three to five days and times that you're available, um, please go ahead and do that. I know in my experience, when I reach out to candidates, they tend to only provide me with one day, one time. So you want to make sure that when you're looking at the interview or the note that you're providing the details they want. Um, another one is a text. You might receive a text from a recruiter stating, hi, this is, you know, Jolene from Getting Hired. I've received your resume and would love to set up a time to talk with you. Can you please use this link to schedule some times for us to have a conversation? And then there's the old school method of um, actually calling and stating, hi, this is Jolene from Getting Hired. I would love to um, spend 30 minutes, 35 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes talking with you about your background. Um, can you please let me know when you have a good time to talk? So then you've completed the phone interview and then you move on to video call, which is going to be with a recruiter again or a hiring manager and then the in-person. So let's talk about each and what you need to do to prep. Okay, so you have your phone interview and you're all set and you're super excited. Um, you want to make sure that you are one in a place that has a great connection. And um, we as recruiters and hiring managers understand that you may be currently employed and may have to take your interview from a phone, from a car. That is okay. Um, if you take it from a car, you want to make sure that one, you're not driving, uh, two, it gets distracted driving, and it can get a little bit distracting to the recruiter if you're driving in a freeway and the blinker comes on and you're changing lanes because we can hear all that in the background. So you want to make sure that you're in a quiet place um, in a parking lot in a car, or away from individuals. Um, you have a very strong connection and you want to make sure that you have um, your resume in front of you so that you can refer to any notes that you might have on your background. So if they say, walk me through your resume, you have your resume right there that they can kind of walk you through it or you can kind of walk them through it and kind of go from there. Your first interview, your first phone interview will almost always be with a recruiter. Hiring managers very rarely, if ever, reach out and start the process. So 
it would be with a recruiter. So you'll want to make sure, again, that you have a very quiet place, a strong connection, and um, the resume. Ideally, also a job description um, in front of you would be good so you can kind of refer to it with your background. Okay, so video interviewing. What is that like? That is very similar to the phone, except it's on video, and most likely you'll be talking with a hiring manager. But again, you may have to take it from your car um, if you're on your lunch break. Again, you want to make sure that you are in a place that has a very stable um, connection and that if you are in your car, you want to make sure that you're away from maybe the front of your building or um, when I was interviewing for different roles and I had to take it from my car, I would get in my car and I would drive around the other side of the building or in a completely different parking lot. Now I'm talking, this is days when we were actually in the office and um, prior to COVID when I was, you know, not working from home, I would drive to a completely separate parking lot in the most far remote position I could get, parking until I could get, so I wouldn't have any distractions. Um, I also had some kind of blurred background so that they could see that I wasn't in my car. Um, again, if people are walking back and forth, that could be distracting. So what do you need to have in order to be prepared for a video interview? It's a little bit more detailed because it's a little bit more um, than just a recruiter interview because most likely you're meeting with hiring managers. So you want to have, uh, first of all, you want to have the connection to where the information that you need for the um, webinar. So if it's a LinkedIn, I'm not LinkedIn, if it's a Teams, Blue Jeans, Greenhouse, um, Zoom, there's a, there's a plethora of different ones out there. So you want to make sure that you have tested the connection prior to the interview because you want to make sure that if you have any issues, um, you can call your recruiter. If you're, you log on and nobody's there, you want to have that number for the recruiter so that you can reach out to them and say, hey, um, nobody's here. Any kind of issues you want to make sure that you have a phone number for the recruiter. Uh, you want to, again, have your resume and the job description so that you can have um, a point of reference where you can refer to the job description. Well, my experience aligns this way, and so I know I can do it because of this. Um, also, you want to have a notebook, and I can talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but the notebook is really for you to help kind of help kind of navigate through challenges that you might face when you get to an interview, because interviewing is very nerve-wracking. Um, and then third is the in-person interview. Now, there aren't a lot of in-person interviews right now that I'm aware of. Um, a lot of it's still virtual. There may be times, depending on the role and the company, that you do go in for an in-person interview. So what do you need to do for an in-person interview? In-person is going to be with a hiring manager. It could be with a panel. It could be with multiple interviews in the same day. My recommendation is when you have that email from the recruiter saying, hey, you know, we want you to come in this the location. I would drive to that location ahead of time. I always drove to any time I was doing interviews in person, I always drove to the location the day before or a couple days before, because one, I wanted to know where it was so I wouldn't get lost. And two, I wanted to know what traffic was going to be like. So I knew how much time um, to engage um, myself in the drive time. When you are going for an in-person interview, again, and if you don't have the availability to do that, just make sure you have the address so that you can um, navigate around the day on the same day. Have the recruiter's phone number in case you get lost or if you get stuck in traffic. If you're running late, it happens with traffic. You want to be able to call and say, hi, Jolene, I am so sorry. There was this major accident that I wasn't anticipating. I'm going to be five or 10 minutes late, but I'm on my way, I promise. You don't want to just show up late because you don't want to put a perceived notion um, onto that recruiter or the hiring manager. You want to bring copies of your resume with you, print it out on resume paper. I know it's kind of old school, but when you're going into um, an actual interview, candidates or managers like to have the option to take that document from you. And they may not, they may say, you know what, we're good, we have one. But you always want to be able to say, hey, you know, I brought um, fresh copies of my resume, would you like one? You want to have um, a notebook, again, and you want to be able to um, bring your own pen so you have that. And you want to have questions that are, um, that are going, that you want to be able to ask them. And you also want to be able to highlight some, um, um, you want to be able to highlight some things uh, that you want to be able to talk into. So we're going to go about that in, in a moment. Um, you want to make sure for video or in person that you are dressing professionally. Uh, even if they tell you that they are a business casual atmosphere, you are trying to put your best foot forward and you want to dress to impress. 
if it's a video interview from the waist up or whatever they're going to see on camera is good. Um, again, can't even tell you how many times sweatpants or jeans and then a nice blazer and a shirt on top. Um, of course, in person, it's going to be a little bit different. You do want to make sure that you are um, dressed to impress. Um, when you are interviewing, again, um, I'll just say it, you know, interviewing, and if you want to, you know, raise your hand or give a thumbs up or what, um, interviewing is, is nerve wracking. It's very, very um, nerve wracking and it can be very anxious. I have extreme anxiety. I will put that out there for everybody who may share that or may not, um, or who just may get nervous. I have extreme anxiety when it comes to certain things and interviewing is something that I I, I suffer from. And so there are things that I have to do to prepare myself um, to go into an interview. And so I just want to share those tips with you so that you can use them um, if you so choose to. When you're interviewing or when you're preparing for an interview, I would, one, record it. Record yourself on your, everyone has smartphones now or someone knows someone who has a smartphone. Record yourself. Record yourself, um, someone asking you questions and you responding so that you can see how that comes across. So you can say, wow, you know, I didn't realize I sounded like that. Or you know what? It sounded great in my head, but when I'm talking about it out loud, you know, it doesn't, it, it doesn't sound that great. Um, videotape it to see how you come across um, when you're presenting. What, what is your body language like? How are you sitting? Are you just kind of slumped in a more relaxed position? Are you sit up where it's like you're kind of just, you know, afraid to move? So kind of see your body language and kind of see how you react to questions. Um, let's see, what else can I say? Um, I always have a pen with me. So I have it in my lap. And if I get nervous, I just use my thumb and I just kind of move the pen on the pen because it keeps me from, you know, swiveling in my chair and it keeps me kind of, kind of calm and focused. And I'm not sure the science behind it, but I know that it works. And so that's just something else you can try. Um, when you come across an interview question that you're not necessarily 100% sure of, and all of a sudden it's like deer in the headlights and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to answer that. A couple of tricks and tips for that too. What I do is I grab my water and I always bring water with me. Maybe not my big huge Stanley to an in-person interview because it's kind of distracting, um, but I always have a bottle of water. And so if someone says, you know, Jolene, tell me about a time when you, um, when you are um, uh, 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 failed to meet client expectations just like that. And if I'm panicking on that, I might just be like, okay, um, let me have a moment. Let me think about that for a second. Okay. And so it doesn't buy you a lot of time, but it buys you enough time, 30 seconds, maybe you can kind of calm your nerves and kind of move forward. And the other thing to be preparing for interviews is having your book, okay? This is my interview book, or my, my, not my, my, my notebook. And so whenever I'm interviewing anywhere, or in, actually this is my, my finance book, that's okay. So anytime I'm going to interview and I want to make sure that I cover everything I need to cover, like what was my biggest um, achievement? What was my, my biggest failure? What was my biggest anything? And I'm not going to remember I'm going to write down like a key word that's going to jot my memory in order to going forward. So those are just a couple of tricks and tips to kind of help you if you get nervous or anxious in an interview. Let's go ahead and move to the next slide. Okay, so this is just an interactive question that we have. Um, so um, based on your personal experience, what is one thing that you don't recommend when interviewing as a potential candidate? We'll go ahead and open the chat if you can kind of Put in there um, what kind of some, maybe um, some full pause you've made, if you've heard, you know, just anything that you want to share. Like one time I wrote down the, the wrong manager, so I called the manager by the wrong name. So anything that you feel like you might want to share. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Being too personal. It, it can happen. You get going, you start to build a rapport um, with that individual. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, you're, you're on a personal topic and things like that. So you do want to be very careful about that. Um, exactly. You know, say negative things about your prior employer or boss. Nobody wants to hear that. You want to hear all positives or maybe challenges, but nothing negative. So awesome. All right. Thank you so much. Um, let's move on to the next slide. Okay. 
Here are some do's and don'ts of interviewing. So when you are interviewing with a company, you do want to research them online. Um, social media, LinkedIn, Glassbowl, Fishbowl, I think is a new one now that I've, I've relatively heard. Um, so you want to uh, research all of those. So you can kind of go in and have a little bit of information on the company. Um, and even the manager, look up the manager on LinkedIn and say, hey, I saw you were on LinkedIn and I saw that you, you know, you worked here for X many years. And, oh, we both worked at such and such. So kind of so you can kind of build that um, per, or that connection, that rapport. Um, prepare questions about the company and um, the role. Uh, again, have your resume readily accessible. Um, dressing for success. And you want to look at the um, body language of the interviewer. Interview question and interview answers should really be under two minutes. Um, just kind of, you know, the star method here. Um, and we'll go into that next slide, but just kind of two minutes. You can tell if it's, if it's starting to get a little too long winded because the manager will kind of start looking around or maybe they'll start looking swiveling or they'll put their pen down. So just kind of pay attention to the body language of the interviewer to kind of gauge um, how your response is being met. Okay, let's talk about the don'ts. Um, don't assume that all the information um, will be given up front. Um, hiring managers and recruiters only have so much that we can get through in a 30, um, 60 minute interview. So the goal is to get to know you um, and your goal is to get to know the company and the position and make sure that you have um, questions ready um, for us as well as answering our questions. Um, stay away from blunt answers. Yes, no, four, six, I don't want to, or I don't know. Um, you wanna be able to give some detail and some explanation um, onto your answer. Uh, again, speaking negatively about your past employer and asking hiring managers about compensation. You wanna save any kind of compensation, benefits, bonus, 401k, vacation, all of that you want to stay um, with the recruiter and you want the hiring manager interview to just be solely about what you can bring to the table and making sure that they're answering the questions that you have. So let's move to the next slide. Okay, so the STAR method um, is also known as the behavioral um, method. So what it is, is you wanna state the scene, um, what was the actual issue, um, the tasks, describe what, describe what your responsibility was in that situation, um, the action, explain exactly what steps you took, and then results, um, share what the outcome uh, that was received. So you want to tell a story with the STAR method. You want to make sure that you're truthful. You want to keep your answers concise and focused. And you want to give self-aware answers as well. Um, it's okay to say, I don't know, in an interview. It's okay to say, you know what? I've never come across that situation. But if I did, this is what I would do um, to solve the problem. Or... I'm not sure, but I would love the opportunity to experience that, or I would love the opportunity to help find a solution to that problem. Um, again, you know, keep them concise and focused, two minutes, and give self-awareness answers. Um, and then what would you like to know? Um, prepare three to five business-related questions. And this is also the opportunity for you to get to know um, a little bit more about the job and the culture. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. So this is um, always an interesting question that we ask when we're giving this presentation. Um, what topics do you think are appropriate to discuss during an interview? Okay, I need to pull the chat box up because it's not coming up for me. Mm -hmm. How to address salary expectations when the interviewer asks. Yep. Work and business related topics. Absolutely. Expectations. Very good. How long do employees seem to stay longevity or current employees? Yep. Okay. Um, those are all some great questions. Um, and we will see what other ones we have um, in just a moment. Um, so let's get some example of interview questions. Um, that you might get asked. So we can have those come up, please. Okay. Tell me about why you're back on the job market and why you're seeking a new role. And you could say, well, I'm looking for 
a new opportunity. Um, I been looking for more of a challenge in my role, or I have feel like I've reached potential at my current position and I'm looking to take on new challenges. Um, tell me about a time when you made a mistake. Um, you, this is kind of a, a unique one because people, I've run into a, a situation where people are like, well, I don't make mistakes or I've been doing this for a very long time. So I've never made a mistake. Um, we're human. We all make mistakes. Um, it's not so much the mistake that the team or is looking for. It's more of how did you respond and what did you do um, to rectify that going forward? And that is why, for me anyway, it's so important to have my book um, when I go to the interview because I know that's going to be a question they might ask. If I can, I can have on here um, mistake and I can put um, report. And I could say, well, you know, early on in my career, or when I first started doing the reporting structure, I miscalculated the reporting. And so I underrepresented um, a number of clients that we were trying to reach. So there's always going to be something that you can, that you can speak on. And again, you want to make sure that it is not just about the mistake, but what you did to kind of counteract that. What did you do to fix that? Um, again, what is your greatest professional achievement? So you want to be able to talk through that. Um, and you want to be able to give full complex sentences. Like my greatest achievement was when I was able to help a company that I'd worked for meet their year-end goal. And this is how I did it. Um, what would you consider your biggest challenge, um, your biggest weakness? I really don't like the word weakness. I don't like its kind of tone. I don't like how it presents itself. And so when I'm interviewing, I don't even like this question at all to begin with. Um, but when I am asked to kind of dive into that, my, my approach is always like, what would you consider to be your biggest opportunity? What would you consider to be the biggest thing that you um, would like to improve on in the future? And mine is time management. I always work on time management because I get heavily focused on a certain task. Or I get heavily focused on one thing that I'm doing that sometimes I might, oh gosh, I, I need to respond to this by the end of the day. And so for me, I have to put up calendar invites on the calendar to remind me when I need to maybe um, check my email or I need to um, run a report that I have to give to my boss. And so again, it's kind of like a mistake to question. It's not just about your biggest challenge um, or your biggest weakness. And whether they ask it or not, they want to know what you're doing to overcome that. So if I were to say um, my biggest challenge or my biggest opportunity for me is time management but this is what i do to combat that this is what i do to work through that that's what they want to hear they want to hear that you've thought about it that you know that this is an area that you have to work on and that these are the steps you've taken to kind of um kind of work through that um, again avoid passive language yes or no questions um, i see you're about 30 minutes um, from the office, if this is in an in, in office position, um, does that complete work for you? Sure. Yeah, no problem. You know, a little bit more. Um, yeah, great. You know what? Um, the drive doesn't concern me at all. I use that as my decompress time. I love to listen to my podcasts and um, driving to and from work are the only time that I really get to listen to my choice of music or my podcast or things that I enjoy. So I'm perfectly, um, I'm perfectly fine with the kind of commutes that, that we have. Um, next slide. Okay, so here are some questions, kind of like what we were asking, you know, what is okay um, for you to ask in an interview? You know, what does a typical day look like? Um, how does the, mean, the team maintain strong bonds? Especially if you're in a, um, especially if you are in a virtual environment, if everybody's remote. What do you do to maintain um, strong bonds? My team is all remote and we have a whole bunch of team chats where we just kind of pop in with each other and we talk and we have a couple of, you know, standard weekly meetings that we kind of just check in. And a lot of times it's just kind of, hey, how's it going? Let's, let's talk about this. Um, so you want to know how your team stays connected um, if it's in a remote environment or even, you know, if you're in an office, how do, you, do we go to lunch together? It's kind of, how does that, how does that look? Um, do you um, ever do joint ventures or joint events with other departments? So like um, with recruiting, um, I'm gonna be partnering with training and development to work on a project coming up. So what kind of projects do you work with in a joint effort? Um, 
what is your favorite part about working here? Uh, what are some of the biggest challenges you face? Um, what projects are coming up in the coming months that you are most excited about? But for me, um, I want to know everything. I want to know the good and I want to know the bad. So not only would I ask someone, what is your favorite part about working here? I'll ask, also ask, what is your least favorite part about working here? Or what is the most challenging aspect about working here? Um, you want to know everything. You want to know the good and the bad. And I know I'm coming close on time, so I want to kind of make sure I get to these last couple slides. But one thing that I want you to remember through all of this is that this is a two-way street. This position that you're interviewing for, it has to be just as perfect for you as the candidate needs to be for the company. So if you're ever in your gut feeling, mm, this just doesn't feel right, or maybe this isn't what I want to do, or maybe that manager isn't something that I feel connected with, it's okay to walk away. It's okay to say, you know what, this really isn't the opportunity for me, um, but thank you very much for your time. So always remember that it's a two-way street. It's got to be the right fit for you, and it's got to be the right fit for the company. And sometimes um, those, those visions don't align, and that is okay. Um, it just means that you're meant to do something else. Um, let's see. Okay, next slide. Okay, post-interview. What are next steps? So you completed the interview, you breathe a sigh of relief, and you're able to kind of just like reflect on that a little bit and like, wow, I felt that went really well. Um, what do you want to do next? You want to send a thank you note, typically within 24 hours. And um, email notes are probably fine. Um, occasionally, I do still get a handwritten note, um, a handwritten thank you note uh, from candidates who want to kind of go back to the old school method. But Emails are perfectly acceptable and it's kind of standard norm right now. A lot of companies will not share the hiring manager's email information. So what happens in that scenario? In that scenario, just send it to your recruiter and say, Jolene, thank you so much for the opportunity to interview with um, you know, CVS. I, I felt that it went phenomenal. Um, I really believe that our divisions and missions align. Can you please send um, my thank you to the hiring manager? I respond to you, absolutely. Thank you very much for your time um, and we'll be in touch soon. And then I'll forward that note on to, um, to the hiring manager. If the hiring manager does give you that information, absolutely send it directly to them. And then follow up. Follow up, that's the hard part. Interviewing is stressful and it's time consuming and it's a pins and needles waiting game. Um, so it can be a little while following up. Always ask the hiring manager, um, what does the process look like? What does next steps look like? And so they, if they tell you, you know what, we're still interviewing, um, we will be able to get in touch with you um, on a decision in two weeks. And then if that two weeks comes around and they haven't responded, send a quick note to the recruiter saying, hi, you know, this is Jolene from, um, I interviewed with, you know, with Brittany last week. I felt that you were doing really well. I'm super excited about the role. Um, can you tell me if I'm still in consideration or what next steps look like? And, um, and that is it, that is it. Um, I did it with two minutes to spare because I can talk. So, Kenise, I will send it back over to you. Awesome. Thank you to both Brittany and Jolene for all of your valuable insight this afternoon. I personally have had so many takeaways as someone who's pretty new to my career and learning how to best highlight and capture my work. Um, I hope that all of you who've so graciously joined us this afternoon also learned some new tips and tricks so that you can put your best foot forward while you continue to search for your next adventure in your career. If you're not sure about where to start, again, we have our QR code here for you all to join our talent community at Getting Hired by registering on our website. 